Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Karen Randazzo and I am a chemistry teacher in New Jersey. I'm so glad that you found me. This is the first video that I've posted in 2024. So happy new year to everyone. I hope you had a wonderful break. It's been about two weeks since we came back to school and it's been a great couple of weeks. My AP students are learning all about kinetics and then my honors chemistry students are working on intermolecular forces. And I thought the topic topic of this video was really fitting because it was inspired by a teacher that I met with this week. I've been doing some mentoring and consulting work. I meet with teachers weekly to help them with all their lesson planning needs, any suggestions for classroom management, and I also provide resources to teachers. And so it's been a wonderful experience, but the um, conversation that I had with the teacher this week was all about how you can take that more teacher-centered lesson and make it a little bit more student-centered. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been um, really a chalk and talk teacher for a lot of years, at least in the beginning of my career. And I think that chalk and talk definitely has its place. Chalk and talk is not bad. It's not a dirty set of words. Chalk and talk is important, especially when you're modeling for students how to solve problems. But instead of doing chalk and talk all the time, instead I've really changed my pedagogy and my teaching philosophy to now incorporating a little bit more student-centered work. And so really this video is to just give you some ideas for how you can make some really easy changes to convert that more teacher-centered lesson to be a little bit more student-centered. Now, one of the easiest ways that I've converted my teacher-centered classroom to be a little bit more student-centered is by utilizing the flipped classroom. So what I do is I instead engage my students in the lecture part of our class at home. That way it can free up more time for the students to engage with each other, engage with the content in front of me. I always find that lecture is not as typically cognitively demanding as it would be if you were doing some sort of inquiry or problem solving. So I really like my students to engage in the problem solving with me in class. That way I can be there to support them, correct any misconceptions and offer feedback immediately. And so the first taste of the content that my students typically get would be during a flipped video lesson. So it's a video lesson that I've created. I literally just take my PowerPoint slides that I've created. I do a screencast and I talk all about the content. The students engage with it at home. We talk about video norms and how they're expected to learn from videos. And, you know, they have to obviously be free of distraction and whatnot. Um, and then my students can come in and kind of reserve that time for more meaningful connection to content by talking with their peers and engaging in problem solving. Now I really like that method and that approach because I feel like I'm able to help students a little bit more readily. It's not like they need to necessarily come after school to get extra help. It's almost like every day in class is extra help where I can circulate and work with student groups and assist them as they're learning the content and practicing the content. Transitioning into a flipped classroom has really been the first stepping stone to taking my more teacher-centered lessons and migrating into more student-centered. The second thing that I do that is so easy and anybody can do is they can take, for example, whiteboards. Now, I have a video on whiteboards and how I make my whiteboards, um, so I'll post that down below, but basically you can make a class set of whiteboards and instead of the students going over the homework with you as you explaining each question, you can have the students come in and work out those homework questions on whiteboards. Anytime your students have the ability to show their thinking or make their thinking visible is a win. And so I really like the use of whiteboards because it encourages students to again, take ownership over the learning, show their thinking and allows me to give them feedback. So you can do this in a variety of ways. Um, my students, as you can probably see, they sit in pods of four students. So typically what I'll do is on the whiteboards, I'll write down the question number that they're gonna be doing on the homework. They have to come to a consensus together on what the answer is. Then the students display their work on the whiteboard and then we perform a gallery walk. And so all the students kind of walk around. And at this time, you know, I'm walking around too, looking at what the students are doing, but also students are checking their pages paper with what's on the whiteboards. So if there's an issue, they can let me know and we can kind of discuss as a class if there's a mistake. But this has been a really great way to get the students up and moving as soon as they come into the class, a really easy way to check homework, and a really simple way to help students get the feedback that they need to know if they're on the right track with the content. 
Now, if you don't have a set of class whiteboards, that's totally fine. One thing that you could do is invite your students to come to the board. So this is something that I learned from a colleague of mine, and it's so simple, but it makes it, again, more student-centered in that maybe your students are working some problems, you could have your students come up and write their answers on the board. And that allows students to, again, make their thinking visible. Their peers may chime in to help them work through the problem. Sometimes if I have a, a student that maybe is a little uncomfortable coming to the board, I'll say you can bring up a friend for maybe a little bit moral support. You can solve it together. So just having the students get up, come to the board, show their thinking for their peers gets really everyone involved. You may be wondering how I pick who's gonna come up to the board and show their answers. Some students, they really like it and they will volunteer, which is always really nice. But sometimes students are a little quiet, so I will use popsicle sticks um, and I'll just kind of pick out a couple of names. And what I do is I write the number on the board and then I write the student's name right next to it. If they wanna bring up a friend to help them, they can absolutely do that. But what I love so much about it is that the students in the classroom area will usually help the student that's up at the board if they're struggling a little bit. So it's a really a whole class affair. They can all talk and kind of work out the problem together. But like I said, this is really good if you maybe don't have time to get all the whiteboards out or you don't have a classroom set of whiteboards. Another thing that you could try to make your more teacher-centered lessons a little bit more student-centered is modify your lessons so that it's more like I do, we do, you do. So you can kind of relinquish a little bit more control as you gradually move through the content. So for example, you could do a question on the board that maybe shows a strategy, like let's say maybe you're teaching dimensional analysis or naming and formula writing. That could be, you know, you do it as the teacher, explain it. And then we do, you can maybe do some cold calling or you can kind of work it out with students by, you know, Q&A. And then the you do is where the students are working out the problems themselves. And so you can kind of relinquish that control a little bit so that the students can take a little bit more ownership over the skill that you taught. You could even potentially do some sort of exit ticket to again, you know, get feedback back to the students and maybe let them know what they don't know, maybe what they need to work on. But but that I do, we do, you do is really great, especially if you have a lot of sets of PowerPoints and maybe you can convert those PowerPoints from maybe more teacher-centered where the teacher's talking, talking, talking to more like, I'm gonna teach this skill, we're gonna practice it together and then it's up to you to try it and let's see what you learned. And then finally, my favorite way to encourage students to take a little bit more ownership over their learning and make the environment a little bit more student-centered is to offer choice whenever possible. So menus are a wonderful tool, but if you're not quite there yet, and especially if you're a new teacher and you're like, ah, oh, that's a lot, I have a lot of balls in the air right now, I need to kind of just focus on learning the content that I need to teach, totally understandable. But whenever possible, offer your students some choice. So for example, if you're doing lecture in class, maybe you can offer the students choice of whether or not they use a notes template or whether they choose to write their notes on a line piece of paper, or better yet, you could have your students engage in a foldable, right? Have your students pick and choose a foldable that they're gonna be writing their notes on. Anytime you can offer your students choice, that automatically makes it more student-centered and it increases student buy-in because they ultimately chose what they wanted to do for that class period. I hope this video inspires you to try some more student-centered pedagogy. If you've been thinking about kind of taking the leap and making the transition, try it. It's always going to be a work in progress and there are definitely some lessons that have kind of flopped in the past, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And so just like we tell our students, practice makes perfect. It's the same thing with student-centered learning. You will learn more about yourself as a teacher and try to understand ways to teach concepts that encourage students to really own the learning and make choices over their education. As always, I welcome your feedback on this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.